What's up you guys? Welcome back to Diesel Creek and more specifically we're out here at the farm today. If you're first time joining us, my name's Matt and behind me here is my $700 auction crane. What this is is a 1989 F800 and mounted on the back here we've got a National Series uh, 55 foot crane. I think it's a 445 or 454 series, something like that. Anyways, if you haven't seen the first few parts of this series, uh, you're definitely gonna want, gonna want to go back and check those out because you're not gonna get the significance of what we're about to do with this thing. Today, we're gonna go ahead and try and get this thing driving up out of here, and hopefully we're gonna get to use that crane if it'll work. I did work on the motor, as a lot of you know, and I put the motor back in. I got it running last time and didn't get to play with the crane. So hopefully the crane works. Hopefully everything functions on it. We're going to find out. Let's go. I know I can't hide anything from you guys. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not going to try. I know there's a lot of really sharp viewers out there that'll notice everything. I'm not staging anything here. I did pull the truck up the other day. Uh, I thought the camera was rolling and apparently the battery had died on me. So you guys missed the very first 20 feet that it's driven. But uh, that's all I did. I didn't shift gears or anything and I backed it right back to where it's setting. It's two feet from where it originally sat when I yanked the motor. So hopefully we're going to do a cold start on this thing here. And uh, then we are going to go ahead and uh, pull it up somewhere nice and level and see if the rest of this thing functions. You know, the truck itself is nothing I was all that interested in. The crane is why I bought this whole thing. This crane is worth way more than what I paid for it and could be very, very handy around here in the future. I'm planning on building a nice big shop as well as a house out here eventually. And I'm sure countless other things that I'll end up using this thing for. Originally, I thought I'd get it and fix it and flip it and sell it and try to make a few bucks. And eventually I might still sell it. But for right now, I think I'm gonna end up holding on to it because it's gonna be just too handy around here to get rid of. So let's hope this thing fires up. There's a manual choke in the cab here and I'm gonna pump the throttle a few times because this is a carbureted unit as you guys remember. And uh, let's hope for the best, fingers crossed. didn't get to drive it very far <laughs> not much further than the other day right after I pushed the uh... so you got your air gauge right here and uh, over 60 psi you should have enough air to release the brakes now watch this gauge when I release them it should drop a little bit and then stop See how it just keeps falling and falling? That means we got a serious air leak out here somewhere. So I shut the truck off so we can hear now. And immediately I can tell we have a serious air leak in our maxi can right there. Let's go ahead and pull the brakes so that we're not just blowing all our air off. So if you're not familiar with an air brake system, this is what they call a spring brake canister. You have a park brake spring in here and a service brake spring in here. And your park brake will automatically come on if you don't have air pressure to hold it off. So without 60 PSI in that rear chamber, or yeah, it's the rear chamber, I think. Without 60 PSI in there, there's a spring that'll force the uh, brakes on. When you push that yellow knob on the dash, it fills that rear chamber and 
releases the park brake side and that's obviously the side we have a hole in because when we push that now we're just blowing air out of there so that thing's got to have a crack or a hole in the diaphragm i see we got a flat dual on that side in there and it looks like a gouge in the sidewall so that tire might be junk hopefully not uh, so with that can like that our park brake is probably dragging over here if not all the way on so we shouldn't really drive it until we get that replaced you can buy these cans pretty cheap altogether or you can get a diaphragm kit and replace just the diaphragm but this can looks pretty rough anyway so i'll probably just end up buying the whole thing i did have a listen the other day after i got the truck running and everything i shut the truck back off and uh i didn't have the brakes off to hear that but uh like the same condition that the truck's just sitting here right now with a pressurized air system i can't hear any air leaks which is pretty nice for a truck of this age and unknown condition usually you have a ton of like little teeny air leaks that just bleed the air system down pretty quick but this uh this sounds pretty good so another thing i know is wrong with this truck uh and this has been wrong since i bought it is this hydraulic line running to our rear stabilizer here is busted off so we need to get a new fitting pushed onto that and, or maybe replace the whole line, but I think that's a pretty long line, so I'd rather not. Um, so even if we can get the PTO to engage and the crane to function, we're not gonna be able to use this stabilizer because it'll just spew fluid everywhere. But other than that, I don't see anything obviously wrong with this whole setup. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. Okay, let's go ahead and get this thing fired back up. That squeal's getting pretty annoying. I really don't understand why it's squealing. I even put belt dressing on it already. Uh, it's the alternator belt, and the alternator spins over fine and is charging. I don't, I don't know. It doesn't feel like it has any bad bearings or anything. Maybe I'll just replace the belt. Anywho, here's our PTO switch down here. To engage that, we need to push the clutch. And there's this is an air-operated PTO, so when I flip the switch, it should engage the gear on the transmission. Hopefully we can hear that. We throttle this thing down. It needs a better return spring. Uh-huh. I heard it grind. Did you guys hear it? The light even works. Oh yeah. Yeah. Give that just a hair, hair more throttle for running the PTO. I heard it engage. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to read the tops of the knobs here, but I can sort of read them. This one says turn, this one says telescope, this one says winch, this one says boom. So winch, this side says up, so that's got to be down. Let's see if the winch goes down. Oh yeah, baby, the winch goes down. The, the hook's actually hooked on the back of the truck there, so before we can do any other functions, we need to go ahead and unhook that thing. I can't read any of these knobs though, so I think, I don't know. Uh-huh. Oh, nope, oh, that's the wrong one. There we go. Uh -huh. I'm gonna have to label these things. These are our stabilizers, our outriggers, the stabilizers over here. Check that out, it works. It works! <laughs> so the idea of the outriggers is to kind of level the truck up. And you actually pick the truck up some. So we got all the weight, we got all the weight onto our outriggers now. We can go ahead and run our boom functions. Hopefully. Where is it? Boom, boom up. <laughs> it works. 
That is a great sight to behold right there. Oh. Over here under this tarp is our uh, plan B motor for the truck. If I couldn't get that one uh, loosened up and rebuilt and working, this was a uh, 385 series Ford engine. Uh, 307 or 327, something like that. Anyway, it's a V8 Ford engine that I don't need laying out here in the middle of the woods, so we'll go ahead and pick that thing up and set it on the truck. And once we get the brakes fixed, we'll drive it back to the shop. We're about to make our first pick with the crane. Forgive me, I've never even run a crane before. This is the first time. So, it's a little bit to uh, learn something and record it at the same time. I'm only doing this one-handed right now. Got the phone in the other hand. Did you guys just see how good I picked up that engine never having run a crane before? At least not one of these types of cranes. I do actually have plenty of experience running uh, indoor cranes like trolley cranes that run through factories and stuff. I've worked in a few different mills and uh, places like that that have those kind of cranes and I've run those quite a bit. But this is very different from that. Everything's electronic on those indoor ones. So I can already tell having a crane around the farm is going to be just a little bit handy. The uh, the telescope feature works pretty good and I didn't even go out that far and it had like quite a bit of reach. So let's go ahead and set the camera up and just scope this baby out as far as it can and let you guys see what that looks like all the way up in the air. Do you guys see how stinking high this thing goes? Shoo, buddy. I think the chart in the crane says it goes like 53 or 54 feet, something like that. And I could actually, if I could find a jib for it, it's designed to accept a jib too that would probably give me like another 15, 18, maybe even 20 foot of stick further out. But uh, I don't think I'm going to need it. <laughs> That's uh, plenty high enough for anything I'm doing. That's awesome. Here's the chart on the crane, guys. Uh, now this does not mean that the winch that's on this thing is rated for these amounts of weights, but the crane itself can handle 6,400 pounds all the way up like that. It'll still pick 6,400 pounds all the way extended, all the way out like that, which is pretty darn cool. Now I'm sure that capacity is reduced the moment you swing it out this direction because you don't have nearly as much stability this way you know, off your corners as you do straight with the truck because the whole length of the truck is acting like a stabilizer. But that's uh, that's still a pretty good bit of weight. So that's the first time I've ever scoped this thing all the way out. And uh, after I did, I looked over here and I had some hydraulic fluid. I don't know if you guys are focused enough to see it, but there's some hydraulic fluid that was coming out from the uh, inside of the boom and running down here. And uh, I got a little bit of oil puddling up here, so I shut it off. And I'm going to climb up here and take a look inside there at the cylinder and see if uh, see if it's just leaking out of those seals. I think I didn't see any fluid there as I was going up. And it wasn't until I got to the end and I kind of ran it out all the way to the end and maxed the cylinder out. And then I started seeing fluid. So maybe it's just like uh, when you really put a lot of pressure on it, it leaks. Because I'm sure that's not fun to tear the cylinder out of there and try and rebuild. Some good news though is our uh, main boom ram here looks pretty dry. There's a teeny little bit of smudge of oil on it. And there is a ding in the cylinder right here we're going to have to buff out because that's going to tear up this tear up the seals quick. That's not good. Contact. <laughs>
All right, so this gem, tucked away in the woods for years and years now, is my 91 Ford Ranger. This was my very first truck. I've talked about it uh, in some other videos at length, but basically this was my favorite truck ever. It was my first truck and I, I'm very fond of it. <laughs> That's why I beat the living crap out of it, I guess. But I do miss this truck all the time, so I actually went and bought another one. And I need a couple parts off this truck, one of them being the starter. So uh, I'm kind of rotund and it'd be kind of hard to squeeze underneath there. So it'd be a lot better if I didn't have to lay down to get the starter out of this truck. So the parts I need off of this truck would be the fuel pump directly underneath the bed here and the starter obviously underneath the motor up there. And I'm just thinking that the crane could probably help make those parts a little easier to get to. I didn't show it when it happened, but I drug the, uh, the old Ranger over there and I was gonna shake some parts off of her and I started having trouble with the truck here. Uh, it would just, I, I shut it off to do something. I went to crank it back up and I'd turn the key to the crank position and it would fire right up. And as soon as I let out of the crank position, the engine was shut off, like you're shutting the key off. And I wasn't coming out of the run position. It was staying in the run position, but uh, not getting power to the coil in the run position. So so these older Ford trucks here, the way the ignition switch works is you have your, your regular old key tumbler inside here. Now when you actuate the key, it pushes this rod up and down. That rod goes down and engages into a little switch box down here that's plugged into your wiring harness. And that switch box is what actually sends power to your coil and all that jazz. So. We've got an issue down there, I do believe. We're gonna go ahead and unbolt the steering column, let it hang down on us a little bit, and hopefully we can get to that thing and uh, get it out of there. So that right there is our ignition switch connector, or actual ignition switch, I don't know what you wanna call it, but we just gotta zap these two bolts off of here, unplug it, and should be able to put the new one right on. There we go. That little hole right there is what the uh, rod goes into, and it slides that back and forth to make the uh, contacts change in the switch. There's our new one. It looks like we got a match to me. Now you gotta get the uh, end of the pin here in that hole on the switch. 
should line right back up, but you know, should. And there's also adjustment on these things too. So we'll get it. There we go. Yeah. Here's how you adjust one of these things if you uh, are ever in the know or need to know. I uh, I got the key in the position you stick the key in, so that's the neutral position for the the actual key. Now the tumbler itself has a, a detent you can feel when you go backwards for the accessory. So I can uh, slide this. Well, I got the nuts cranked down a little too tight now, but I can slide the switch forward or backward, and I can feel that same detent in the switch for the accessory. So I know that if I have them both in the neutral position, we should be lined up just right. I can snug those nuts down. There's the key on and I have my lights here, so that's right. She cranks over. There we go. Right to life. Still got that belt squeal I'm working on. Okay, got everything buttoned back up here. Let's double check our work. Oh yeah. Love it when a plan comes together. That's been giving me trouble since I first started uh, cranking on this thing after I put the motor back in, so glad that's uh, settled. All right, it's a cold, wet, miserable day and I wanna get that spring brake changed today and uh, I got the parts to fix our hydraulic line, so we're gonna get that taken care of, but uh, I don't wanna lay in the mud. I'm gonna pull it up here on the gravel. So actually I lied, I said I was going to do the spring brake, but we're going to do this uh, hydraulic line first and then I'll be able to use the outriggers to help lift the truck up, make it a little easier to work on. Um, I thought it was this line that was bad when I took it off. I never really paid that close of attention to it, but here, all that was really wrong with it is one of these fittings right here. It's just a JIC fitting, so uh, we got out of this cheaper than expected. I just got to get this broken piece out of here and we can toss it all back together. Beautiful. I leave all the fittings loose and then once you get the line routed and situated nice then you tighten everything down and that uh, helps keep your hoses from like buckling and twisting weird. These things seal by this tapered flare at the end of the fittings. So if you're connecting these lines, you always got to make sure that the no dirt or rust or anything on them. Make sure they're nice and clean, otherwise you'll crank it down and it won't seal. And you'll probably tear up that mating surface and it probably won't ever seal again. Uh, how did I get this thing off of here? There's not clearance for it. And I have the wrong size wrench. It always happens. You climb under the truck, dang nabbit. There we go. It's a three quarter, guys. Why didn't you tell me? It's a three quarter. I checked the other side. It is a little different. Okay. Got the line all buttoned back up. Now we can uh, actually try the stabilizers for the first time. but we got a leak. Aha, we have a loose line. I'm betting I probably loosened that line whenever we were, oh, if you remember back at the very first video of the crane series when I was in the uh, auction yard where we got this thing, this jack was dragging on the ground so I had to get it sucked back up there and I'm pretty sure I loosened those lines when I did that. 
We don't have clearance, Clarence. Okay, so we got the hydraulics fixed up. Let's move on to installing our air brake can here. Now, you may have seen my Instagram post about this if you follow me on the uh, the Instagram, and if you don't, head on over there and follow me at Diesel Creek. Anywho, you buy this nice, get this tag out of the way. You buy a nice brand new spring brake chamber from the local Napa, big old American flag on the side here, it says this unit is designed, tooled, tested in the USA. Nice, big, and bold. And over here in the fine print, made in China, though. That is the fleecing of America right there. Somebody in my Instagram comments said that, and that was the word I was looking for. That just ticks me off. You're selling it with that big sticker on there, hoping everybody sees that and just assumes made in America, and then in the fine print, made in China. Crock. Yeah. All right, so here's our bad spring brake chamber. We've got two airlines coming over here. The red, you know, I know there's a shadow on everything. The red line is on the right there. That is our emergency line. And the green one on the left here, that is the service line. So that is what applies your brakes while you're driving down the road. And the red line there is what overcomes the park brake or the emergency brake inside the chamber here. So. This thing pressurizes the moment you release the park brakes. This chamber pressurizes and squishes a, a spring to release your park brake. And then it stays pressurized. And the moment you lose air pressure, boom, that spring goes right back into your park brake and this tire will walk up. There we go. There we go. Oh, that sucker's on there. This calls for some heat. <laughs> Stupid. I forgot. <laughs> I need to put the caging tool in here and release that spring pressure because that spring pressure is fighting us right now. Uh, hopefully you guys can see I started to get that nut to back off and uh, hit this spring chamber wants to kick so we should be able to cage that spring in there and that should help us out quite a bit all right so here's how you cage the brake chamber you get this uh, special bolt here and the new ones come with one of these uh, I carry a couple of these in my truck just in case you got to move something that needs caged without these you're, you're not going to move one of these trucks uh, so basically if you could see down inside of this hole there is a slot that looks just like that and you stick this thing down in there and then turn it a quarter turn and it can't come out it's trapped in there so then you go ahead and run your nut down like that and then you get yourself your wrench and you start cranking this bad boy on there and what that's gonna do that's pulling that spring brake well that's pulling the spring inside of the brake and that's gonna release the brakes to your wheel so uh, should go without saying you should have your wheels chalked while you're doing this uh, because you're effectively taking off your park brake. Now, in my case, the wheels are up off the ground, so it doesn't really matter. Well, my, like most mechanical contrivances when you buy old junk from the auction like I do, uh, this turned into a little bit of a pain there was some heating and some cussing involved so ideally to disconnect the slack adjuster from your spring brake can you would knock that pin out right there she's galled it in there i can't get it to budge uh i didn't even try messing with the cotter pin yet it actually looks like it would come out but the pin she ain't moving and i didn't feel like cussing at it all day so what i've actually been able to do here is back the lock nut off of the adjusting yoke here and now I'm adjusting this nut here and just gonna thread it clean off of our push rod on our can and I've got the vice grips here keeping that push rod from turning just got the last thread out of that and there we go can is out now of course we have issues here if you can see the 
top of our mounting studs here are about even with the beginning of the thread on our push rod on the original chamber. Over here on our new chamber, looks like we have about an inch of unthreaded rod before we get to our threads from the top of this. So this guy isn't gonna work. Well, I mean, the chamber itself would work. We just need that threaded more. If I had a die, I would just run it down there, but I do not. And I would like to just not have to do that. So I'll just take this thing back to the back to the Napa and hopefully they can get me the correct one. Maybe they can get me one that's not made in China. All right, well, they didn't have any other different spring cans with uh, threads that went further down on the push rod, so got us a die that matches this thread pitch and we will go ahead and run the die down here and cut the threads down as far as we need to but uh, before I bother running it down 12 miles of thread here we're gonna go ahead and cut this shaft off to the length that we need looks like we're at about three and seven eighths here so we'll go ahead and measure over here the same way three and seven eighths and lop it off We got our threads cut all the way back to where we needed them. Let's go ahead and get this thing installed. So we got our can all mounted up here and hooked up and to go ahead and check our adjustment here with the push rod you gotta if well in my case I don't have to chalk the wheels because the wheels are up off the ground with the outriggers but you got to chalk the wheels and release the parking brake and then pull this thing out from the can and check your travel there you should have no more than one inch of travel so it looks like we're in spec there. All right, now with our brake system squared away, it's time to turn our attention to the turntable and the crane. We're up here on top of the uh, deck now, and I'm paying attention to the turntable on the crane here. And I noticed before that this one bolt was backed out and never really studied the whole thing. Probably should have before I went and started lifting stuff with it. But I noticed yesterday that, boy, that bolt's not shouldered up and neither is this one. Uh, so that's three on this side and then on the other side. On this side we have one here that's, you know, a mirror of that side. So I'm not sure why that one on both sides isn't run down. But the rest of them appear to be tight. So what I'm going to do is pull these bolts out that are not shouldered and take a look at them and make sure there's no damage or I don't know some reason that they're not shouldered maybe they're not the right bolts maybe they're too long I don't know we're gonna pull them out of there and make sure everything's okay in there before we go running them back down hopefully that's all it is is they're just not tight for some reason but uh, we'll see yeah, I need an extension on this guy That is not good. That appears to be our problem. Hopefully, we don't find more of the same. So, 
the bolt being messed up isn't a real big deal, but hopefully when I look down in this hole, there's enough meat down there that we can just run a tracer tap through this hole and uh, run a new bolt in there. Not sure how well you can see in there, but it actually doesn't look too bad. It looks like we will get lucky with this one and be able to tap it back out. Well, heck, that guy was just sitting in there. Probably could have turned that one out by hand. That isn't a good sign. The threads are rolled on this one, but not boogered up like this first one we pulled out. So, this one's fine though. I have no idea why it wasn't tight. Should go right in there and be just dandy. Yeah, this one here doesn't look too bad either. I know it's hard for you guys to see in there. Uh, it looks like we'll just run a tap through it and make sure uh, the threads are all nice and clean and we'll run a fresh bolt in it. Last suspicious bolt here. Oh, it ain't gonna be good. Uh, yeah, more rolled threads. All right, I got the proper tap to try to repair these holes. Hopefully we can just uh, run the tap through them and be able to run our bolts back in. Good as new. Okay, I am quite glad that I did a thorough going through over this turntable now. There was, I mean, almost every bolt I was able to crank down on some. So, uh, yeah, I, I really should have inspected that before I started doing any lifting with it. Though I haven't lifted anything heavy. Uh, still, you don't you don't play around with that stuff. Definitely, uh, definitely should have inspected that better. But that's on me. It's taken care of now. I didn't torque them yet. I have yet to locate the torque spec for these bolts, but I will come back. I got them as tight as I could with a half inch breaker bar right now. That should be plenty tight enough to uh, have a little bit of fun. I'm not going to go doing anything seriously heavy. Nothing even remotely pushing the crane's capacity. So I will retorque those as soon as I find the spec that they are supposed to be torqued to. But right now I got the crane all the way stretched out here along this dirt pile, so I should be able to walk down along there and inspect the whole thing and see if I see any issues with it. If I do, I'll show you. All right, I've checked the boom over real good on both sides, well, all sides, and uh, the only thing I'm really seeing that's not wrong, but uh, maybe looks a little out of spec would be these, these should be brass inserts in here, I'd imagine. Uh, I used to build sliding jacks like these for mines and you'd have to shim out these spacers and uh, the guides whatever you want to call them in there i'm not sure what the spec is on these oh look there i just found another problem not very tight in there i'll crank that down but anyway these uh these spacers there's only should be so much space between the inner tube and the outer tube and the spacers are supposed to take that out and keep them snug and probably got some wear in these and that's uh, pretty simple to fix. All we would do, and I'm obviously not gonna do it right now, all we would do is support the end of the boom, set it down so that 
we take the weight off of this underside here, undo some bolts, slide the old one out, have a new one made and ready to go in there and uh, slap it in. All the weight, all the wear in this application is gonna be on this side and some on the sides. Really this upper side shouldn't ever have any wear to it. And the same up there where it slides into the main boom. I'll go ahead and tighten these up. All right, booms inspected. I'm saying it's good to go. Let's go ahead and uh, see if we can't pick something up with this thing. Well guys, I'm pretty sure the crane works pretty good. There's a lot of naysayers when I got that thing. And uh, yeah, I gotta say, it feels pretty good. 700 bucks, another 600 and something in parts. The old Cadillac converters. I'm gonna see if those are any good anymore. Get some scrap money out of those hopefully. I know a lot of you are going to yell at me in the comments, but I could not get this view. <laughs> That's so dang cool. 
when rangers fly. I think it was a pretty good investment for 700 bucks, fellas. There's a lot of naysayers, but I, I think that speaks for itself right there. <laughs> well, that's my $700 auction crane. As you can see, it works. I'm happy with my investment, and uh, I'm happy you guys hung out with me today. Let me know down in the comments if you guys want to see a lot more content with this truck. I mean, obviously, you're going to see it anytime I use it, picking stuff up, putting stuff down. But uh, if you'd like to see me go into a little more detail on sprucing the old girl up, you can weigh in on all that stuff down in the comments. Like I said, let me know what you want to see me do with this thing. And uh, I guess I got to put this thing down and wrap up this video. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Well, guys, I'm losing daylight here. I guess I better wrap up this video and put this truck down and uh, get on home to the missus for dinner. If you like the video, if you like seeing rangers fly, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.